Welcome to OOO, another ordinary podcast where we dig deep into case studies and the nitty gritty of Web3 marketing. You'll find here all the amazing people that are building Web3. So stick to us as we address their marketing secrets and learn how to build amazing products and brands. Hello everyone, I'm Alex, your fellow Web3 marketer and the host of Other Ordinary Podcast. This is episode 38. Let me introduce you to my guest. As a member of Queston's founding team and current head of partnerships, Max has gained extensive experience in Web3 marketing and project growth. His enthusiasm for forming mutually beneficial alliances and dApp building became evident as he discussed the state of growth tooling today and elaborated on how Queston can help to boost user acquisition and community building. Hi Max, how are you? Good, feeling good. Thanks for having me today, Alex. Uh, thank you for being with me. Um, I know we've been planning, I think, uh, yeah, we've been planning to do this for quite a while. And I feel like I keep saying this for like many of my, um, many of the speakers that I'm, I'm having. Um, but I'm, I'm super, super excited to be, to be having this chat with you. And um, I can't wait to, to dive uh, deep into it. Me too. Yeah, I think it just means that we're both doing a lot of great things at the same time. And But I'm still happy that we finally managed to set this call up and looking forward to your questions. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into Web3? Sure. So actually, it's been quite a long journey. I've been in the space for a bit more than two years now. Um, I've been working in tech before, mainly in Asia and then through a couple of my old colleagues, I got connected to the team that I've been working with today. We started out roughly two years ago with the app development. So we started out building our own first D app. First, we focused more on the social file side of things, which was an app called Show Me. It was something more in the ways of Clubhouse, but with token-gated, NFT-gated kind of communities. And then at a certain point, we figured there was a lack for growth tools, for tools that projects could use for their marketing, for finding and acquiring new users. And therefore, we kind of started out with creating Quest N, which back then was still Quest 3, actually. And now, two years later, we're still um, pretty much the same team, but we've grown a little bit just like the project. Project has around roughly 3.5 million users and plenty of communities on 20 different ecosystems. But I'm going to share a bit more about that later on. Um, for those that have never heard of you, can you tell us a bit about like what is Questen and where this idea came from? Sure, sure. So Quest then initially is a platform that can help projects all across Web3, but also Web2 with their product growth, with finding, acquiring new users, and also with creating campaigns that can help them to engage those people, right? So it could be something like a new product launch, or maybe you have some other anniversaries campaigns, or maybe partnering up with a couple other projects that you're uh, working with. And once you've done so, it's a very simple and easy process, right? So you come to a landing page and set up your own community and campaign within a couple of minutes. And once you've done so, the rest is all fully automated and will help you to not only create those campaigns, but also to analyze the users that you have on the platform. Um, can you tell us a bit like some, maybe some fun facts about the platform? Sure. Uh, I think like... Fast. <laughs> um, hmm, fun facts. That's a good question. Well, I think we, we started out, we wanted to create a platform to actually solve our own problems. Um, but later on, it became a much, much bigger thing than we anticipated. And now it's actually moving over, not just in Web3, but also like targeting some Web2 companies. So, for example, we've been also working with L'Oreal and uh, some other like um, quite famous and popular um, companies in the beauty scene as well, which is, of course, something we, we never anticipated in the first place. But we're very open to all sorts of corporations. Uh, what are the kind of companies that are using your platform? So mostly, like I said, it's Web3 companies. And here we have a quite wide variety of projects. So it starts off with um, big exchanges, right? Like OKX, um, BitGet, something like that. Then we have a lot of DAOs. We have NFT projects. We have a very big, I think even the majority of projects is located in the GameFi scene and gaming scene. Uh, could involve some AAA gaming, of course, with like major studios, but also like GameFi, um, where you earn some tokens, some NFT 
NFTs while you play. And then also, of course, DeFi, wallets, pretty much anything that is part of the ecosystem of Web3 can also be found on Questen. Do you think like um, the gaming companies in Web3 have like the most engaged users? So like they have, they have, they have the biggest chance of um, acquiring the users or like engaging them in some way through Questen? Or well, through the platform Questen? Well, I think not just on Questen, but in general, if we just take a, a look at the whole scene, just like in Web2, gaming has been one of the biggest accelerators, right? Um, right next to DeFi, of course, in a space. But for gaming, I think one thing that is quite interesting about the platform itself um, that we've built is that the whole approach is quite gamified, right? You come to the platform, it's very simple, you just sign in with your wallet, and then everything is like a game. You just click some buttons, do some setups, and then you're done within a couple of minutes and the page does the rest of the work for you. So I think that's definitely also one of the one of the things that we've been focusing on most to make it yeah easy and simple for almost everybody. So even my grandma is using Quest and these days. Who? <laughs> my grandma. Oh your grandma. <laughs> what does she use it for? Uh, well, you know, just also exploring, um, learning about new companies and just earning some tokens and NFTs. And I mean, we've also launched a new mobile app for mobile devices like iOS and Android. So she's also able to do their, that kind of stuff on the iPad. <laughs> I, I actually love this. Uh, maybe I should actually tell my mom uh, to like, uh, maybe she doesn't have like much free time, but like maybe in case she wants to get a bit into Web3, that would be a nice way to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the things you, you just mentioned and I really liked, um, even like when we, when we spoke initially, was the fact that uh, you built the platform with uh, the user in mind. Can you please explain a bit, like, how does this process work for you? Um, and if you've done any research, if you've gotten any feedback on the development of it, uh, because you've grown quite fast and I've looked at your roadmap and, um, you have like pretty, um, um, amazing numbers. Like anybody would, anybody would be astonished by it, especially in web three. Um, so I was wondering if you can maybe um, talk a bit about like the, the, your journey when it comes to the building the product. Yeah, the way you mention it now, those numbers do sound a little bit shocking. Um, <laughs> 3.5 3 million users within a year. But to be honest, like as a team, we were never so much focused on the numbers, right? We were very much focused on the product side to make the product as easily as understandable and usable as possible. And this means starting from the very beginning, right? Not just the UI, UX, but also, for example, mostly the sign-in options, right? Because a lot of people out there, even the people, you know, or the people that are using maybe web apps, but have never looked into Web3 or like crypto stuff, they don't even have a wallet address at the first place, right? So we've also tried to add some options, for example, with social media, with email, with all those kind of options, or also even creating your own wallet address through the page as a login. And then once you've done so, the page, like I said, does the most work for you. It's very simple. We have roughly 200 templates available and you just pick and choose whatever you need and kind of create your own campaign. And it's pretty much like a doc almost, right? Like a form that you fill out. So for example, if you want to set up your community, you just add a logo, you add a quick description, you pick some of the tasks that you want users to do. And add some tokens maybe or nfts as a reward and that's the whole process right so it's quite self-explanatory and then on the other side if there ever is some you know some concern or some questions we also have a very strong team on the back um that is always there to to support um i've actually used this uh, i've actually used question um uh, for one of the campaigns that we ran and it i can confirm it was pretty intuitive um but at the same time i think um sometimes um especially when it comes to like new products and stuff like a bit of a of a guidance is needed but at the same time like um i like that you i've, I've received like great support from your side um and as well i like, have a pretty good knowledge base 
um, which I think is always like uh, always comes in handy, um, especially for like first first time users, let's say. Um, and fr from what I've noticed as well is that you have a pretty big variety of, of projects that are using it, which I think is also interesting to maybe like compare some data or to, to compare um, um, ideas or kind of see like what's, what are people putting out there even right now in, in, in the bear market where we're just, pa we're just crossing. Exactly. Um, I think yeah, there is also like a lot of room for inspiration, right? Especially on the community side, because some things that we've also been doing was like intros coming from our side, right? So if we have some new projects onboarded on the platform, we would also go up to them and say, okay, maybe if you have someone that is also using Quest End, but there is no connection yet, we'll also be able to help you and kind of try to make that connection, even though maybe in the first place, there is no immediate benefit for us, but in the later end, we'll have a very, very strong connection and very strong connected uh, network on the platform. Yeah, I think this is like uh, always very, very important. Um, I'd like to to now get into a bit of the, the nitty gritty, like the nitty gritty side of things. So, can you maybe tell us like how do quests play a role in Web three user growth and marketing growth strategy? And I'm asking you this because I've noticed like such a big debate, especially at ATC about it. Um, everybody was talking about like quests being the 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 next thing or like one of the big differentiators from between like web two to web three. So I wanted to, to kind of see like your perspective here. Sure. So whether it's the next big thing, I think only time will tell. Um, but to be honest, from our position right now, the way we see things, we've created Quest and as a platform that has never truly focused on the numbers, like I said, right? So what we wanted to achieve is to close that kind of hole, the lack of really native web three growth tools. And the way we've been kind of targeting this issue was to set up a platform with templates that projects can use to do those campaigns, but in a way that they can still achieve native and like organic sustainable kind of growth. Right. And the way it works is not just through saying, okay, do some following on Twitter, on discord, join a server here and there, because eventually, you know, this will also get boring and you'll have plenty of people coming in with some bot accounts, clicking some buttons and then robbing you from your rewards right but what we've been trying to do is to also add some more customizable features right so there is one big section that we have called the api section so for example if you have a certain api if you're a wallet maybe and you say maybe sign in with our wallet or maybe if you're a game project say play our game reach a certain level um, earn some rewards here and there do this and that then we can also verify those transactions, right? And this allows us to get a very targeted and customized way of marketing, which is, I think, far more interesting than just a rather like boring marketing campaign by itself, right? Because we can also say maybe do a trade for 50 bucks on this platform and we get the automatic verification that the user actually did that transaction within a second, right? And apart from that, we've also started to add more and more capture features right so we have features that you know do just a normal capture or some check-ins to verify okay this is actually a genuine user it goes as far as even facial scans which is something that we've also added now to the platform to really truly say okay this is the person that has been yeah participating in the campaign so how do you think like quests play a role in like web three user growth? And I'm asking you this because I feel like many times um, quests have based themselves on rewards, which is one of the things that kind of drew drove the, the user growth in web three, especially the beginning. And I feel like right now it's kind of still there. Um, and I was wondering if you, if you think that this is still a strategy that works maybe. Right. So I think, like I said, rewards is definitely a big thing, but like I said, it has to be more sustainable and native, right? Organic, because if you have maybe, let's say 20,000 people participating within a couple hours, you can be quite sure that a high percentage of those people is not real, right? So therefore we've been focusing more on a slow kind of growth and in this way, I think we can actually achieve something that can help projects and benefit them in the long run. 
in general, I think in the Web3 scene, quests have played a big role, especially because it's a gamified approach, right? People come in, they do some actions. And for example, on the quest and platform, it's also fully permissionless, right? There is no locked levels or something like that. You come in, you do what you're interested in, you take some rewards maybe, but not necessarily, right? It could also be something like, reduced price of a service or maybe you get a coffee or you get a t-shirt or maybe a ticket to an event could be anything right so but i think the the incentive still needs to be there because otherwise you know um there might not be a, such a big of reason to participate I think like this kind of ties in quite nicely with my next question which is regarding um um, if this is a good initiation uh, in Web3 for both the user growth side of things, for testing assumptions, for uh, and maybe for like new marketers in the space that are just trying to like test waters and kind of see um, how to use different tools, so, like how it can benefit them in, like in the long run. Yes, I think like we said earlier, it's definitely a good starting point to explore, also to see what other projects are doing in the space. And especially now these days, we've also had more and more Web2 companies that said maybe the tools that we find here within Web3 are much more advanced than anything that we've been using before. So even those companies are kind of in a transition right now to start there and explore, right? And this is also something that we're trying to build up, like a place where people can come, can learn, can explore, and not just, you know, a place to exchange traffic, but also to exchange and gain information. Um, how many quests do you see on average from the same company? And maybe I won't really necessarily ask your name, but like the types of companies that are using your platform for user growth. Right. So I think in general, I mean, we've been doing this for a year now, right? And uh, the biggest communities or the most active ones that we had have hosted a couple of hundred quests, right? But, uh, you know, those were just quests lasting for a few days, right? Um, usually it's a number between, I don't know, let's say, for example, 10 and 60, something like that. But it always depends on the scope of the campaign and also the size of the campaign, right? Because on the one side, there might be something like a small follow us on Twitter task and then maybe join the event. On the other side, there might be something like a large marketing campaign targeted at a specific ecosystem right so what we've done for example with ck sync or maybe aurora um, a couple of those projects was to set up a whole ecosystem campaign that just focuses not just on the ecosystem itself but also on the projects within the ecosystem right um, i said a couple of names now already but apart from that um yeah bigger clients of course okx uh, bybit bitget um we've been working with bnb chain a lot uh, linear mantle all those kind of um, ecosystems exchanges and like i said it's a quite wide variety of projects but if you're interested to get a deeper dive into that um, we also have a community section on the quest and platform we'll find all of our biggest um, communities i know you also have some like good case studies there so i think anybody should uh, go and like check them out Exactly. So there is also an help center um, where you'll find all sorts of tutorials, case studies with some data. And I think, yeah, the website itself is also a good resource to get some ideas if you want to get started. Um, so another question I have uh, is regarding um, tokens or NFTs. Which projects are the most active? Or... In, when it comes to the rewards they're giving as well? Good question. I think it's, you know, always changing because sometimes projects have some tokens, sometimes they do some NFTs. Really also depends on their scope. And usually we also advise them to mix it up a bit, you know, to make things more interesting. Apart from those two, we also have whitelists for rewarding, right? So for example, if you're just a project that's starting out and you say, maybe we want to hand out some whitelists to some participants so they can try out some of the features, new features that we may be developing. That's also something that's 
as possible, right? Uh, furthermore, we've also been exploring with whitelists as an access pass to a special event that they're hosting. So there are actually multiple um, yeah, possibilities here. But if you're interested in specific numbers, I think there's also a ranking on the website itself that is changing every day. So you'll have the most up-to-date numbers also there. Are, uh, are airdrops still a thing in, in Web3? Um, and what does the data you're having is, uh, is saying about this? Well, I think recently there have been projects still doing those airdrops, but I think projects have gotten more and more careful about the airdrop that they're doing, right? Because setup also has been a little bit difficult. On the question page itself, we have an integrated airdrop feature. So for example, if you say, I want to do a small airdrop for my community with some tokens or some whitelist, whatever you want to do, there is also that kind of feature within the platform and you can directly do an airdrop for the community that you have, or you can also upload, for example, some Google Sheets or some CSV files and then do it directly from the platform itself. Have you seen any campaigns on the platform that really drew your attention or like you felt they were very creative? Yes. So I think in the last couple of months, we've done quite a couple good community campaigns um, with specific ecosystems. So one of them was with CK Sync, for example. Another one was with Aurora and Linea. And for those kind of campaigns, we also created specific and customized landing pages, right? So this means this was like a full size banner, you can imagine it, where people come into the platform, they see this like large banner, click into it. And then each project that we had participating, and usually it was a number between 10 and 15 projects, also had its own API quest, right? So people coming in were able to learn about the ecosystem at first, kind of explore, okay, how is it different to anything else? And then apart from that, also start to explore, okay, what kind of projects do I have here? How do they differentiate themselves? And what kind of tasks do they want me to do, right? So I think I had a pretty big like learning bonus from that and also learned a lot about new ecosystems and ecosystems that are currently on the rise. Um, from the data you have, have you noticed any trends that you can tell us about? Sure. So I think recently, I mean, we've still seen quite a spike in minted NFTs lately. So uh, we've minted, I think, more than 2 million NFTs on the page until this point. Apart from that, we've also still seen plenty of users coming in. So I think coming back to the question you asked me earlier, questing is still one of the bigger things in the field for sure. And then in terms of the projects that we're working with, like I said, it's quite a big variety, but from day to day, we'll also have new project types coming in, right? And what I like especially about the current market situation is, and this is especially important if you're a smaller project just starting out, but also for any other sort of project, right now is a good time to connect with people, right? Because those projects that are currently around have most likely been around for quite a long time, right? So those projects, they have solid connections, they have a solid background, they've been working on a couple of different projects in the best case. And right now, as there is not so much you know, noise, it's also good to connect with those and create strong connections for the future. Um, something I've been dying to ask you, to be totally honest, like ever since we started this conversation was regarding like your user growth journey, like how did that look like? And like, how do you think, or like, what do you think helped you achieve such a big, um, number in only 12 months? Right. So I think, like I said, we've also been doing our own projects in the past. So once we started out back in the days, we still already had some sort of connections there. And this is, you know, just connecting to what I said earlier. Uh, connections are the most important things because if you have, let's say, five to ten solid partners already and they can help you to do maybe a small launch campaign, that's already a big plus, right? And then after that, we just added on top of that, right? So we did a lot of business development, also one of the areas that I'm in. Um, just to add that, I'm currently the partnerships lead here at Questend. So I've been doing mostly of those like business development calls in the past. 
And I think this is also something that's very important for a couple of months. And then once you reach a certain point, projects will also start introducing other projects or maybe connecting you to this and this and this person. And then it starts rolling at a certain point, you know. And as we also have some certain social features on the page, there's also a certain like social or network effect, right? So that gives you that exp exponential kind of growth. Yeah, I think like word of mouth, especially in Web3 and amongst marketers and founders is so important because I think the community is so small and it's uh, like it's one of the biggest drivers, like if you want it, uh, especially for projects like yours. That's true. That's true. Especially like if you're also headed to any like major conference, this is also like a big bonus, like for example, in Singapore, or we've been doing a lot of stuff in Southeast Asia. It's also important to find your right market, right? And uh, to find a good fit for the product. Because if we say, okay, maybe my product is focused just on Southeast Asia or maybe Chinese Indian markets, then you should also heavily target those areas. If you go there to events, it will be very easy to meet those people. Because like you said, the circles are rather small. Um, I think like you, you touched on a very important point and it actually connects with my next question regarding like countries. Where are the most active projects coming from and what about the users as well? Right. So we've been working with projects from quite everywhere, right? So we've been targeting Southeast Asia and Africa mostly, um, but also here I'm based in Europe right now. We have plenty of projects here. We've also been participating in some events in Denver and in Los Angeles last year. So there are also some major clients from the US. User-wise, I think, yeah, mostly Southeast Asia. And then uh, with our mobile introduction of the new mobile app that we have, also Africa and those kind of, you know, South America uh, emerging markets that are mobile heavy and not so much focused on, on like web kind of um, website apps, right? So, so that's that. And then apart from that, I, I would say mostly also regions that are crypto bullish, right? So, for example, you'll have Nigeria, you'll also have um, some countries here in Europe like Turkey, um, Dubai, of course, as well as in there. So quite, quite a big variety as well. Do you think like the country or like the, the current state of the country, let's say, or like how poor or rich people are there? Uh, and I'm here, I'm referring to like African countries, which I know they're like very big adopters of crypto or like Latin America, for example, or like Dubai, but like there's a, it's a bit of a different situation. Do you think that impacts, um, how people perceive such projects or like such platforms and they're like more, um, confident to to still gather crypto compared to like country to like regions or countries where things are a bit more established maybe like i don't know western europe let's say sure sure so i think especially here there might not be such a strong monetary need right once you interact with the platform but what we've been trying to do is not just to place a big focus on earning but also to give new opportunities, right? Because the projects that we've been working with, especially also in Africa and, and Southern America, are close partners of ours, right? And what we've been trying to do is also to set up a network there to give people the opportunity and the chance to connect with those teams, maybe get some education and even get a job within the team or just, you know, get some more opportunities apart from the learn and earn that is happening on the platform itself. Um, what, ab what, ab what about <laughs> uh, new marketers? Like what kind of advice you would have for them? Um, because I know there are a lot of people like looking to look into transition or they're looking for all sorts of resources to like learn more. Um, like what would be your advice there? Sure. So I think as for every kind of area, you should do your own research in the very first place. And if you, you know, if you're interested in doing some quests, question can be a good starting point. And this is not just because I'm very biased on this question, but it's also because I think, you know, you'll have all those connections there. You'll have all those communities, all those ecosystems. 
and you can just sort it, right? If you say, okay, I'm interested in open, like OPPNB, or maybe I'm interested in CK Polygon, I can just sort by ecosystem. I can say, okay, this, this, this project is what I'm interested in. I go to the community and I create a connection, right? Talk to them directly and maybe I can get some input. Apart from that, I think um, people should also start listening to some more podcasts, like OOO podcast as well, to get some good insights <laughs> like today. Yeah, um, I think there are definitely plenty of sources out there, right? Um, you just have to look for it. And once you know some people, uh, they'll also be happy to help you. I think the crypto space is a very, even though small, but very warm and, and welcoming space. One of the things that I kind of noticed, and I, I think it was one of, actually one of my biggest lessons after HCC, was regarding um, tooling, because I think like this is not enough explored in Web3 by marketers. And I feel like it's such a big chaos, especially when it comes to like transitioning or companies trying to hire and not really figuring out, like know exactly what to look for. Uh, many of them are still a little asking you to have a lot of like web two, but like enough knowledge of web three, I think it's such a big chaos there. But like one of the most important things that I've noticed is regarding tooling and like platforms like Question. Uh, I think that's why I feel so strongly about it that people should be really looking into and play around with like tools like yours uh, because then they can actually get a, a, a bit of a better feeling of like, who are these companies? Like, how does it work? Um, what is it used for? And then maybe like kind of build from there. Of course, it's like, do your own research. Like most of the times, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. Um, unfortunately, maybe because like, it just takes like a little bit more, a bit more time. Um, I think that's why I'm, I'm using this, this term, but at the same time, it gives you the chance to like actually, um, learn from your own experience, which, which I think is great. Um, so as we were like on the, on the web three tooling side of things, I wanted to ask like, if there are any other like tools or resources that you think, um, um, anybody should be, should know about, or, like, so it's something that you guys are using and you find it quite useful. Right. So, I mean, something that we've been building out for our clients and our user base right now on the platform is something called a tool overview, which is pretty much just a page that shows all sort of tools that they can use for Web3 marketing and growth. Right. And those are not any sort of partners of ours. This is just, you know, all of our research collected together. So basically right about like that, what you've just been talking about. Right. So uh, we have this like separate page where we have a number of tools, give some recommendations and just have them listed there so you don't have to spend a lot of time on research. Apart from that, what we've been building out lately is our own KOL marketplace, right? So apart from the services that we already offering, um, we also created this network of roughly 200 KOLs. So if you say maybe questing is not so much my thing and I want to move to a more targeted and uh, yeah, different approach with KOLs doing some specific, you know, language or area targeting, we also have that option on the platform now. Um, I think this is like a, a great um, new direction or like new avenue to, to explore. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Maybe you can also share the, the link with us so I can put it in the description of the episode. Um, before we wrap this up, can you please tell us like where can people find you? Sure. So right now they can find me here in Vienna uh, in person. Uh, apart from that, yeah, later on this year, I will be going to Istanbul for if uh, for if Istanbul, if global and also DEF Connect. Apart from that, if you're just online, you can find us on question on the line com on Twitter, as well as on Telegram. We have a separate channel for all the projects that are using question. So, for example, if you say maybe I'm interested in connecting with other projects that are on Questen, we have a Telegram channel called the Questen Alliance. You'll also find further links all on our Questen announcement chat on Telegram, as well as on our website down below at the very bottom. But I'll also be happy to share those links later on. 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much for for having the, this chat with me. Um, I'm looking forward to to maybe speak to you in the future and see how things evolve uh, moving forward. Especially because I think we're going to be approaching a very interesting time, uh, not just this year but uh, next year as well. Uh, let's see how how the market evolves. Let's say, um, yeah. And uh, thanks a lot, and uh, speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks, Alex, for having me. I was having a blast and looking forward to connect with a lot of new projects and also seeing you soon again. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much for listening to our Out of Ordinary podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to hear more content like this, then open up the podcast app and click on the follow or subscribe button. It takes less than five seconds and is the single best thing you can do to support the show and stay up to date to more marketing strategies that are being used in the Web3 space.